हाई एवरी वन अलकुम कैसे हैं आप लोग आज मेरे साथ तमारा है तमारा का ताल्लुक हॉलैंड से है और तमारा पाकिस्तान दो दफ़ा आके जा चुकी हैं और आज हम चाहेंगे कि आप तमारा से जो चाहें सवाल करें उनके बारे में जाने मैंने अभी उनका इंटरव्यू भी कंडक्ट किया है उसको भी मैं पब्लिश कर दूँगा और आप वो भी देख सकेंगे उनके बारे में जान सकेंगे तमारा एक लाइफ कोच है और डिफरेंट लोगों की मदद करती हैं उनको गाइड करने में और एक इंट्यूटिव कोच है तो अगर आप में से किसी को कोई सवाल हो तो काइंडली आप यहाँ कमेंट में लिख दें मैं आपका जो सवाल है वो स्क्रीन पे ले आऊँगा और उसके बाद अब मैं तमारा तमारा को ट्रांसलेट कर दूँगा कि वो लोग क्या पूछ रहे हैं So hi Mike Chavez how are you lovely to meet you today we are with Tamara from Amsterdam and uh, she is an intuitive coach uh life coach and uh, Mike is from the US I think and he is a coach on how to use Facebook groups in a better way so if anybody has any questions uh please throw them here's the first question by Khaista Gol Khaista saying how are you I'm doing wonderful The sun is shining in the Netherlands, which is quite rare. We only have a uh, really opposite of Pakistan, or uh, at least in most of the world, we have about 20 days of sun per year, and the rest is gray and raining. So we have sun today. So I'm absolutely feeling ecstatic and and wonderful. So enjoying a bit of uh, of sunshine and light on this side of the planet. Brilliant. So, आप लोग सारे hello hello लिख रहे हैं और hello hello का तो कोई जवाब नहीं होता. Everybody is typing hello hello. Uh, so hello hello back hello hello how are you hello hello <laughs> I'll just do an enthusiastic waving and dance or something on this side yes yeah, hello sure so which park in Amsterdam are you at I'm actually on the outskirts of Amsterdam in Amstelveen it's very close to Amsterdam but if I would be able to name a favorite park in Amsterdam it would definitely be the Humble Park the main main park where where everybody goes it's absolutely brilliant Okay, so Muhammad Mahmood Hussain is saying, "Where have she belonged from? Well, she's from the Netherlands, which is also known as the Holland. And uh, these days, there's a lot of controversial around Holland because of this one man. Anyway, so but she belong belongs to Ams from Amsterdam, and uh, it's one of the most liberal places in the world. It's a very small country of 17 million people, smaller than Karachi." and um it's a wonderful place to be in i really i was there two months ago and i really enjoyed myself oh, wow. yes amsterdam amsterdam itself is also a little hub within within the netherlands itself and the interesting place about amsterdam and indeed it's being so liberal is that it's not so much that everybody shares the same opinion the people leave each other in their opinions and in what it is that you're doing so you can If you go to the park, for example, in the Fondel Park, there there are like Muslim families with their children, and on the other side there are a, a few hippies playing football in a bikini, and it coexists next to each other. It doesn't mean that everybody uh, agrees with their point, everybody's point of views, but there is this general sense of just letting it be, and it's mostly related inside of the bigger cities in the Netherlands. If you go a bit more outside there. uh opinions and and viewpoints are also a bit more restricted uh than it is but it is a very interesting breeding ground to test and trial and error uh belief systems and way of looking and and outward expressions and and stuff like that it is at least right at least it's safe to do it you might end up having a little a few people looking at you like Like this, like what was happening. Yet um, things can be explained here, indeed. It's a very interesting comment. Actually, I wanted to answer uh, yeah. you about. Um, you said that uh, you think that in Pakistan people don't have the freedom to do what they want to do, but it's not really true. The problem is that in Pakistan people have fear. and self imposed uh, limitations and because yeah. of those self imposed uh, limitations we don't end up doing what we really want to do 
So according to law, I can go out in a probably in a bikini or a mankini, and you know I should be able to be fine. But according to my own internal insecurity, um, that would be something which people wouldn't uh, want to do, or I wouldn't want to do because I would be scared to do it. Uh, so that's the bigger problem, and also we have again a self-imposed fear of our family what will the family say what will this person say what will that person say so because we rely so much on the family we do because we will you know in your society uh, people have a certain organizations to go to for taking help plus it's a small country yes. so whereas in our country typically we go to the family for help uh, if there is something problem, you go to your family for help. So therefore, you are never going to upset your family because you want your, you know, you need, you will need your family over and over. So, uh, yeah, I understand what you were saying earlier, but uh, to be honest, I personally think it's really allowed uh, for people to do this. But unfortunately, we think uh, that it's not allowed. I personally think if five people only five people stopped lying and actually started to follow their heart, the whole country will start to change. Uh, maybe the first three and people will die, maybe, or maybe not, because uh, people will think of it as radicalism. But I don't think that they will, or uh, and they can bring change. Yes, go ahead. And like you say something very beautiful, thank you for, for sharing this, is that I've been to Pakistan twice, and every single time I'm there, I actually feel very free. It's it's a it's a very interesting um, interesting dynamic, and I I hear and I experience indeed um, what it is that you just shared at the moment that I am in in Pakistan. I don't experience a restriction, but I do experience indeed a fear of of expression. Because people are they are incredibly beautiful, and there's there's so much to be said, and so knowledgeable, and there's so much going on, and um, of course because I am from a different country, it might be a bit easier to express things to me. So I, I hear a lot of stories and, and a lot of beautiful things, and there's there's so much power and expression. Yet indeed, it's on the outside, it's not uh, not shown. I want to share a question here. I I, don't, I didn't mean it to stop you. Go ahead if you're not finished. No, go ahead. So this gentleman okay. is his name is Abu Yusuf, and he's writing in Urdu that mm -hmm. uh, uh, he thinks that in Amsterdam people disrespect Islam and people don't respect Muslim people. So I wanted to answer him uh, first. I will answer in yes. English, and then I will answer in Urdu. Um, yes. I was in Holland and I was invited to a city an hour outside uh, Amsterdam to go and look at a refugee camp. Uh, I can't remember the name of the city. As soon as I remember, I will let you know. The moment I get out of the railway station, there's a huge mosque in front of me. And I'm like, what is this? You know, it is, there's this Turkish mosque right in front of me and everybody around there was Muslim. Uh, the food was halal, everything was Muslim and people were in the hijab. It was one of the most beautiful mosques. It was four or five stories high. It, was, it had a cafeteria, restaurant, beautiful. So I made a video about it and I shared it. So the gentleman who, a person who has never been outside Pakistan, a person who refuses to talk to a foreigner, a person who refuses to actually interact and there are these persons that are everywhere not just in Pakistan but there are I'm sure there are people like that in your own country also so a person who has been less exposed is uh, likely to be afraid of the things which he doesn't know or understand or he only hears things from the trusted sources and uh, he would then react on those sources also um, does that make sense to you Yes, definitely. There, there are quite a lot of mosques in Amsterdam and in the Netherlands everywhere. Uh, and they're quite beautiful and they're prom prominent and they're, they're open. And just like you said, there are a lot of shops and, uh, and there's a really big base of, uh, of Moroccan and Turkish people in the Netherlands. 
and they've been here for a very, very, very long time. Um, I guess if there's any misunderstanding between, it is, especially the younger kids, that there is, there is a, a, still a discovery between the two cultures, and there is also quite a lot of misunderstanding, but not a disrespect. And the general uh, consensus is that uh, Islam is quite well respected around here. I, yeah. I guess the same thing goes up here, right? Because if you don't know something that is outside of your country, is that people here simply see what they get being shown on television about what it means to be a Muslim and what what Islam represents. And that is, as we all know, not a very pretty picture in general all over the world. So the, the similar lack of knowledge is is present around here, although, um, like you said, there there's, there's also a lot of respect. Yeah. So I want to answer him in Urdu, if you, yes. if you allow me. Uh, yeah. He is he is also writing that please don't hate or spread hate against um, Muslims. Uh, so I want to answer Abu Yusuf. Abu Yusuf, America, Europe में इनका काम नहीं है किसी का काम नहीं है कि वो आपके खिलाफ हेट फैलाएं या वो आपकी मार्केटिंग करिए आपका काम है कि आप अपने अच्छे इमेज को इन तक पहुंचाएं जिस जबान में आप लिख रहे हैं उर्दू में लिख रहे हैं ये इनको नहीं आती तो आपका काम है कि इनकी जबान में अपना दीन का पैगाम इन तक पहुंचाएं उनका काम नहीं है कि वो आपके बारे में आके स्टडी करें तो ये हो गई पहली बात दूसरा ये आपसे नफरत नहीं कर रहे ना फैला रहे हैं जिस तरह से पाकिस्तान में एक हादसा होता है तो उस हादसे की खबर दी जाती है इसी तरह से अगर कोई हादसा यूरोप में होता है और वो खुदा खास्ता किसी मुसलमान ने किया होता है तो खबर दी जाती है और क्योंकि वो अगर मुसलमान ने क्या होता है तो खबर ज्यादा फैल जाती है क्योंकि हेट या फियर या नफरत जल्दी फैलती है मोहब्बत आहिस्ता से फैलती सो द आंसर वॉज अ लिटिल डिफरेंट आई विल ट्राई टू फर्स्ट आस्क रिपीट इज क्वेश्चन ही सेंग प्लीज एस्क नॉट टू स्प्रेड हेट अगेंस्ट मुस्लिम एंड द प्रॉफिट मोहम्मद एंड माई आंसर वॉज It's not her job or anybody's job to spread anything about Muslims. It's your job as a Muslim to spread who you are, what you're supposed to do in her language. You're not even writing in English. Forget uh, Dutch language. Uh, he should be learning. He should be making videos. He should be reaching out to people and spreading and marketing his product, which is his religion, rather than uh, expecting somebody else to do it for him. Nobody else is going to come and do your job for him. Number one. Number two. in general people anywhere in the world don't spread bad news about anything people are just afraid of many things and if there is a bad incident no matter who does it bad news always spreads faster than good news so if there is one bad accident it will be all over the news if there is 100 good accidents nobody will really talk about it so if there is a murder they will it will be on the news but if if 100 people are getting married over there and they're muslim against you know something like that nothing will be about that on the news it doesn't make news unfortunately uh, if it's not good news it's news if it's good news it's not supposed to be news so that's unfortunately um, how how thing how plus if anybody has any question i'll take one more questions i don't want to keep her here for too long the purpose of this call was to introduce you to all of you guys and you can go ahead and add her on facebook i would love for the entire country to know her friend her get to ask her questions and she can become a catalyst a bit and a bridge between our country uh, and her own country and the big country which is called the planet earth basically um yes, yes i prefer to be a citizen of planet earth <laughs> uh we would love to be right but unfortunately when you have little exposure uh when you don't have opportunity to even ask questions to yourself uh when you're not exposed to something new uh you don't change unfortunately yeah and but that is the the beauty in the in meeting new people is because you learn every single time every single time meeting meeting a new person we learn something new about what their perspectives are about the world what is what is their experiences what is your experience we're all a different human being we're all a different universe on ourselves and there's so much to learn and to grow from and just simply meeting each other and meeting each other in the middle without judgment uh, one of the biggest 
uh, reasons in my experience of fear is judgment. It's sort of self-judgment and just projecting it out upon the world by a lack of knowledge. We constantly judge each other. We constantly judge each other's culture. We judge where we're coming from, each other's families, each other's religions, each other's political systems, what you like and what you don't like. And if we just simply would stop the self-judgment and the judgment of another and have the guts and the courage and the boldness to just look somebody else in their eyes and simply ask, like, hey, right, what do you do and what do you stand for? Let, let me get to know you. It's not about agreeing or not agreeing. It's simply about meeting each other and seeing what can be created out of that, uh, that complex. And we will discover that all human beings are way more alike than that we think, that beyond and beneath all the cultures and all the ideas that we all have the same desires for, for peace, for connection, for co-creation, for being together, for living joyful lives, regardless of how that looks for, for you, right? It might look completely different for me than for you or for anybody who's watching, but to have, and to have respect for that, the way other people do it. So get, get lost with the judgment. Self-judgment and other judgments. Like, have a look. It's very, it's very difficult to get rid of it, Tamara. If you're not exposed to something new, um, you know, yes, if if it's all based on the information we accumulate in our life, uh, most of the people of Pakistan can never meet a foreigner. They even if they meet a foreigner, they don't have an opportunity to actually have a conversation with them. And you can't have a deep conversation with anyone unless you actually talk with them a few times, you know. It takes a certain trust factor before you ask a deeper question to anyone. So, kind of hard. That's why I'm trying to introduce people on Facebook so that they can actually go out there and build trust and actually uh, reach out to these people. Now, in, in my experience, there is... Of course, judgment is fueled by what we know and what we don't know. Yet in my personal experience, we always, regardless of where you're at, what your circumstances are, what your situations is, what your condition, are, your ideas, that we always have a personal choice to, in that moment, just to have a look like, and ask ourselves, okay, what do I want to know here? Is this true? I'm seeing something new. And... I'm agreeing or not agreeing. I'm aware, I'm not aware, like, I'm afraid, I'm not afraid. We just to have another look. And it's not about getting rid of judgment. It's about making a personal choice to just meet somebody. And maybe think about the fact that they might be just as scared as you are. And that is a choice we as human beings always have, regardless of where you come from. Some people are more aware of the fact that they have the choice than others. Um, and the ones who have the awareness, I feel, might be practicing that a bit more. And it will spread, right? Because at the moment that I drop my fear of meeting somebody, at the moment that I drop my judgment, not expecting that somebody else does that, I right? just simply look at the person and ask, like, hey, who are you? And even if we don't speak the same language, right, there, there's so much to be done just by being with somebody, right? To not just disregard them, but just to stand there and have somebody let them have a look at me and I have a look at them. Right? Because when I visit Pakistan, I don't speak Urdu or Punjabi or any of the other languages. And most people don't speak uh, any English or not enough. But we are together in the same space quite often, and there is a form of understanding. Of course, there's so many deeper layers of understanding, but even that is already so important. If we already skip these steps, then growth comes from very, very, very small steps, and opening up the world to connection and to get to know each other happens from very, very, very small steps. So I do believe that we all, regardless of where we are, have an opportunity to in every single moment, make a choice to see what is in front of us and let go of the judgment and just have a look. We don't have to agree with it. Like, letting go of judgment doesn't mean agreeing with it or 
leaving your opinions right. So just have a look. What's happening here? That's it. Nothing more than that. Ta-da! Agreed. Ta-da! So, <laughs> there's one last question and then I'll uh, call it a day. Is that, well, why are drugs legal in Amsterdam? Yeah, that's a good question, why drugs are legal. Um, I guess the interesting thing is, is that the drugs can be used in two different ways, right? You can use them as an escape, to escape from your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, and to seduce yourself to get out of your, your, your conscious space and as a release. And on the other hand, the drugs is a plan. It has healing capacities. And by allowing the plan, there is an opportunity to um, also use the healing forces. And I guess the, the Dutch government already discovered a long time ago, it is at the moment to forbid the use of the substance, that people end up in way more trouble because they feel unsafe, so they do it secretly, and no help can actually be, be given. And one of the greatest misunderstandings which I often encounter is that as soon as I say that I'm from the Netherlands, people go like, oh, so you're smoking drugs every single moment of the day, right? It's like, no, what, what do you think? I go to work and all this stuff. I don't want to be spaced out every single moment. Because it's available, it also takes away the need to constantly do it, right? Nobody smokes it to just get wasted and pardon my friends to get fucked up. And just lay in a corner, in a layer all day. Like, no, that is usually, you know, the tourists who are actually doing that. Um, so, Dutch people, you would be surprised of the amount of Dutch people that actually actively smoke. It's not that much, and there's quite a lot of respect around using the substances in accordance with what most people think they would be useful. So the drug which is legal, which is not necessarily a drug, it's a herb, uh, is called marijuana and it has a lot of benefits if you Google it. Uh, it is now also legal in half of the United States. It is also not actually legal in Holland, but it's, it's looked away at and uh, they don't, it's not punishable. So, and it's not available everywhere, it's only available in certain stores. Um, and just like if alcohol is available, not everybody buys it. Similarly, not everybody smokes, as she's saying. And it's commonly available in uh, um, in Islamabad. I hear you can just pick it up from outside your house. It's everywhere, <laughs> Islamabad. <laughs> I hear. Like, like here in the Netherlands, people go to shops and you need to buy it and stuff. In most places in the world, it just grows in your back garden. Yeah. And if you can get the plant, it's, it's it's a herb, like you said. I mean, it's. Uh, it's yeah. a herb that actually is healing to the body if you use it with the proper intention and with the proper purpose of it. Uh, Nuzad Bano is saying it's not legal here. Well, it's in, again in Pakistan. It's not. Uh, I don't. I think it's like a twenty dollar bribe cost to use it. Uh, <laughs> something which is doable by bribe is is. I don't know if it's legal or illegal. I don't know to get into this debate. Uh, if if you do it, I've never had it in Pakistan. Huh? By the way, it's very very commonly used. It used to be used uh, in in our parts of the world uh, a lot. Uh, the opium war was around there. Anyways, people should read about it rather than just going ahead and um, and thinking it's a bad thing. Not everybody you think everything you think is bad is bad for you. Study about it. There's a lot of story behind it. It's it's. Uh, um, by the way, if you really want to protect yourself from a bad drug, it's called sugar. Stop using it. Uh, yes, I that's agree really with you. Sugar is one of the most addictive, most addictive drug in the world. world is sugar, not not marijuana or you know other things. Yes. Anyways, uh, thank you so much, Samara, for hanging out with everyone here. Um, I was hoping for more interesting questions, but people seem to have taken a lot of drugs uh, or sugar or something, <laughs> and they're not asking any questions. <laughs> That's usually what you get when you call the Netherlands uh, somewhere in a, in a sentence. Everybody suddenly sort of gets, uh, stoned. gets on the drugs, like, ah, oh, stoned even without stoned. doing stuff. Anybody who has a question, um, by all means, send me a message. Please do send a question 
when having an inbox with 300 people saying hi to me, that is it's sometimes yeah. quite difficult to understand. So yeah. if you want to know something, drop your questions and I'll be happy to... No, uh, no uh, hi or hello. No, would you marry me? A practical yes. questions. <laughs> yes, indeed. I'm not available for marriage proposals. <laughs> and I'm also not available to receive, uh, to hear anything on my physical space. Like, ah, I'm yes. not available for that. No photos, please. There's a lot of porn available. If she really wanted to do it, <laughs> she can Google it. <laughs> and it's it's not just her. Every single female friend I have on Facebook who is not from Pakistan, they complain that they get unweird photos from Pakistani men, uh, and not just Pakistani, but everywhere. You know, I was. It's, all over, it's, it's all over the world. It's all over the world. You know, the it's first time. Fine. The fir I want to share a crazy joke or a story, a funny side of it. I was very young, I think I was 20 or 21, I traveled to Singapore and I was in a backpacker's place and I met a girl and she was from, I don't know, Canada or the US or somewhere and she said, I've been to Pakistan. I was like, whoa, you've been to Pakistan, you know, I didn't meet anybody who's been from Pakistan. How was it? Well, it was interesting. People will come and just touch you and just see if it's real color and just look at you and stare at you because they've never seen anybody white. <clears throat> so I felt so ashamed. I felt so bad. And I felt like really, really bad about this. Like, oh my God, these Pakistani people, they're like touching people and, you know, doing stuff. So, and I told her that I'm really sorry about it. She said, don't worry. When I'm in Italy, people are coming and pinching my ass. It's even worse than when I'm in Italy. So I felt, okay, fine. At least Pakistanis don't do something like this. So again, uh, thank you everybody for watching. Do share the video, add her on Facebook, um, you know, follow your uh, heart. Uh, she's here to guide you on following your heart. Uh, get in touch with people who are not like you. Um, ask them questions which intrigue you and uh, you will find out great things about yourself. Stay blessed. Assalamu alaikum.